Unless you've been living in a cave for the past few months, you will know that the current coronavirus is pretty much all over the news. With the media covering the issue extensively, it is hard to consume any form of media, be it TV, newspapers, magazines, or social media, without seeing something about this terrifying new virus. With over 3,000 people dead and 93,000 confirmed cases, these figures are alarming, and they are still growing. People in China have been in lockdown, unable to go to work or even leave their homes under fear of arrest. Factories and commerce as a whole has been on hold in China for almost two months, only just coming back to somewhat normalcy now. In March, in other countries around the world, fear of the spread of the virus is showing itself in different ways. In the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, and other Western countries, people have gone into mass hysteria and are making panic purchases. Stockpiling goods in the event a breakdown of coronavirus leads to food shortages. Some people have even gone as far to stockpile excessive amounts of toilet paper for some reason. Governments around the world are also reacting to the issue, placing potential plans in place. Some of these plans do, in fact, involve widespread quarantines where people would not be allowed outside of their homes, with the military patrolling the streets and policing this new policy. The economic impacts of the virus are taking a huge toll on the world economy as well. With the mass hysteria, stock market drops, manufacturing delays, stock shortages, and overall business disruptions, causing as much chaos alone as the virus itself. But what does all this really mean? Is coronavirus really even that bad, or is it a reaction to the news of the virus that is causing the worst of the side effects? Is the mass hysteria really to blame for the economic damage, or is it the virus itself? Let's take a look at some facts. While the COVID-19 coronavirus is without question of some concern to general world health, it is actually pretty mild in terms of how the normal, healthy human body can deal with the virus. Of the 93,000 plus cases of coronavirus so far, over 50,000 of these cases were reported as mild, meaning that almost 60% of the people diagnosed with coronavirus did not need or require hospital medical care. Simple home rest and self quarantine was enough for them to get better and back to normal. The remaining 40,000 confirmed cases did require hospital care, but these people survived. This means that these people may have already been in the hospital, had been recovering from another illness, surgery, or ailment, were elderly, or had an already suppressed immune system. The 3,000 fatalities, while very sad, were made up of the highest risk patients of the hospitalized group mentioned above. The symptoms of coronavirus are similar to that of a regular winter season flu: fever, dry cough, general fatigue, headache, sore throat, nasal congestion, and muscle pain. The cure for most people: simple bed rest, sleep, plenty of water, and over-the-counter cold medicine will have the majority of those with coronavirus back to full health within a week. The symptoms and treatment for coronavirus are identical to that of a seasonal flu. If you are under 40, the chances of you dying from the coronavirus if infected are just 0.2 percent. If you're aged 40 to 49, it's just 0.4 percent. If you're 50 to 59, it's 1.3 percent. If you're 60 to 69, it's 3.6 percent. If you're 70 to 79, it's 8 percent. And if you're over 80, it's 14.8 percent. If we compare that to our everyday chances of dying, it doesn't even seem that much of a risk. For most people, the chances of it taking your life are about the same as those of you being killed in a car accident each time you drive, 2.2 percent. That means that driving your car each day has a higher chance of killing you than the coronavirus does. So, if the coronavirus is no worse than a mild case of the flu for most people, what's the big deal? To start explaining that, let's look at the figures for the seasonal flu. In the same time period that the coronavirus has been a threat, according to the CDC, from December 2019 to March 2020, there were 32 million cases of the seasonal flu. Of that 310,000 hospitalizations and over 18,000 deaths, that is just in the United States alone. Did we hear anything about that on the news? Not a word. So why are we hearing so much about the coronavirus? 
Why is this made out to be such a big deal when the flu kills so many more people each and every year? It's simple. We understand the common flu. There's no mystery there. It has been part of our lives for thousands of years and will be forever. But seemingly the coronavirus is different. While the coronavirus alone is no different than the seasonal flu, what is causing so much panic is merely our lack of understanding of it. The novel coronavirus, also known as the SARS-CoV-2, or COVID-19, is simply not fully understood. It is perceived by health organizations as a threat until it is better understood. Combine the lack of full understanding of the virus with the fact that it is virally extremely contagious leads to governments and health organizations treating the situation with caution. This was the same with the original SARS outbreak in 2002 and the H1N1 virus, a.k.a. swine flu, in 2005 and 2009. The rates of diagnosis, hospitalization, and death for these were pretty much exactly the same as the coronavirus. This means that it's not really a threat to most people or their daily lives. Just on paper, it's something we don't fully understand. The World Health Organization has said that it estimates standard yearly deaths due to the flu at around 450,000. Of the almost 50 million deaths that occur on average each year, that means that flu itself makes up just 0.89% of deaths. So if the everyday flu and coronavirus really aren't even that bad, what are we also worried about? The fact is we all need to look at the facts before we take everything we see and hear on face value, even this video. This video is the result of our deep research into the topic, but we encourage you to find out more for yourself so that you can make up your own mind on all of this. So there's no need to go out there and stockpile goods. There's no need to panic. If you want to get through coronavirus, the flu, or most viral infections, just use common sense. Wash your hands, sneeze into your elbow or tissue, and avoid touching your face without clean hands. But overall, look after yourself. Eat good food, lots of fruits and vegetables. Make sure to exercise every day and keep a healthy weight. Also, don't trust everything you read. That's your number one coronavirus survival strategy.